ancient genes in modern times. This will be one of the overarching themes of our nutrition course. If we look at our dietary habits and our environment under an evolutionary perspective, we see that they have profoundly changed very fast, very recently. But our genes haven't kept pace, because natural selection is much slower than the pace of our modern times. This arrow indicates the course of human history. Sometime around 4 million years ago, the first man appeared on Earth, for more than 99.5% of the human history, until the agricultural revolution which occurred only about 10,000 years ago. Our ancestors were hunter-gatherers, and so 99.5% of our genes developed before the introduction of agriculture. Agriculture and animal husbandry have been around for only a tiny little fraction of human history, but they have changed dramatically our lifestyle and eating habits during the last 10,000 years. And yet, even more dramatic changes were introduced just a few generations ago with the Industrial Revolution, which brought more technology, highly processed foods, and the use of food additives. And then, mostly after World War II, post-industrialized countries began to experience food abundance and an unprecedented multiplication of eating opportunities. If we were to scale the entire course of human history to fit one 24-hour day, men were hunter-gatherers for the first 23 hours and 56 minutes. The agricultural revolution occurred in the last four minutes and the industrial revolution in the last seven seconds. On an evolutionary scale, our genes have barely had the time to realize that something even happened. If we were to compare ourselves with our ancestors, we would easily spot three very noticeable differences. We eat more food, we eat different types of food, and we are way less physically active. Scarcity versus abundance, active versus sedentary lifestyle, and old versus new foods. Let's examine these three themes more in detail. Up until a few decades ago, food abundance has never been a problem in human history. The problem we had to deal with was scarcity, if not famines. If you think about it, food abundance became common really only after World War II, and let's not forget, only in some areas of the world. Until the Industrial Revolution, food abundance was the privilege of a selected few. And if we look at the evolution of our average portion sizes, we clearly notice that it has increased dramatically if we just compare it to the 1950s. Before that, and for most of the history of humanity, food has been scarce rather than abundant. It should come as no surprise that our body is programmed to accumulate and to oppose weight loss. Our genes are still overly concerned with food security. Nobody told them that we can easily go grocery shopping whenever we need, and instead they are in constant fear of upcoming famines. When food is available, our primordial instinct is to take advantage of it so we can store some extra energy in our adipose tissue to be used in time of deprivation, which however will never come. But if we go on a weight loss diet by just severely restricting calories, our genes will think that a famine is indeed going on, they will worry a lot and will do anything in their power to slow down metabolism and oppose weight loss. Before the agricultural revolution, the normality was to have an alternation of short periods of food abundance, followed by longer periods of food scarcity and caloric restriction, and our body devised a very clever system to deal with this situation. During the occasional food feast, for example after a successful hunt, our body knew it was going to be over soon, and thought it better take advantage of the situation by eating as many calories as possible and activating metabolic pathways to facilitate fat accumulation, to be stored as an energy source for the upcoming period of scarcity. At the same time, this deposition of fat caused the production of over a hundred inflammatory messengers from the adipose tissue to boost our immune system. Indeed, providing protection against infection and disease is a costly activity in terms of energy, so it made perfect sense for our body to develop this system which allowed to boost immunity only when energy was abundant, as indicated by the accumulation of fat. Then, 
when the feast was over, a calorie restriction period would follow. The hunt today was not successful, and yet trying required a lot of physical activity. All that was eaten was probably some fruits and vegetables, roots, maybe a few insects. The energy balance was negative. More energy was spent than was provided by food. So it was time to use up that fat that was accumulated in the adipose tissue. The body now goes in energy-saving mode. Metabolism slows down, and those inflammatory mediators secreted by the extra adipose tissue are no longer produced. At the same time, the adaptive stress response is activated. This body response to a physical environmental stress was actually a good thing, a survival mechanism which strengthened the body's cellular maintenance. We could call it sort of a good stress, the kind that is also caused by physical exertion, short time exposure to temperature extremes such as a steam bath or a cold shower, or hormesis, the beneficial stimulatory effect of small doses of a toxic substances that a higher concentration would be harmful. For now, let's just appreciate how our genes developed an incredibly smart way to make the best of the environmental conditions we had to face for most of human history. But evolution is slow, and these mechanisms are still in place today. The problem is the environment has changed dramatically, and the change was so recent compared to the history of humanity that our genes didn't have time to keep pace. Today, we don't experience food scarcity and calorie restriction, and we live in a constant state of food abundance. The adaptive stress response is no longer triggered, and it is very easy to eat in excess of our needs, leading to unlimited fat accumulation and a chronic release of inflammatory mediators from the adipose tissue that, instead of boosting immunity, cause a slow, steady destruction of our body's tissues, leading to a plethora of inflammatory diseases such as diabetes, atherosclerosis, arthritis, asthma, allergies, pulmonary disease, cancer, and neurodegenerative diseases. To make things even worse, our level of physical activity has also dramatically changed. If our ancestors had no other option than living a very active lifestyle, if anything to get food, we today can get everything we need with hardly any physical effort. Leading a physically active style is a choice rather than a necessity, and we turn out to be quite lazy. On average, we have become more and more sedentary, so in parallel with eating and accumulating a lot more energy, we are also spending a lot less.